Muy buenas tardes a todos, a todas. Bienvenidas, bienvenidos en Casa SEAT. Yo soy Gabriel Palma, soy el director de Casa SEAT y es un placer compartir con vosotros el evento de, de esta tarde. Uh, I switch in English. Welcome everybody. And uh, tonight we have the great opportunity to listen to a masterclass by Esperanza Scapucci. I think you all know that Esperanza is a renewed uh, director, orchestra director. She is Italian. She has been recently appointed uh, with the cross, the French cross for culture, and I think it's one of the most prestigious um, awards that uh, are uh, acknowledged by the French government. And Esperanza is one of the most interesting profiles in culture and music in uh, at international level. I think also as a woman, as a woman, uh, I think there are very few women with this role. Uh, today, able really to 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 share uh, her experience at that level. Therefore, I guess it will be. I'm sure it will be a fantastic conversation. I think it's a privilege to have her. And uh, without any more words, I will just introduce Speranza Scapucci with us. Enjoy. Via la mascherina. Hello. So I, uh, speak, I will speak English. It's okay for everyone? See? Si? Poco, poco. Uh, you're all students? Music? How many? Cantanti? Todos cantanti. <laughs> And mu music musicians? Nothing. Ah, what do you play? Guitarra, eh? Pianoforte, come me. Voi? Anche. Composer? Eh? Fans. Hans, bien. <laughs> so, um, La Bohème, I, I, when Gabriele asked me, I'm here to, to make a concert at the Conservatorio Liceo. And so Gabriele asked me, please, after you did Traviata, let's make another opera. And I said, okay, let's make Bohème. And then I discovered that Bohème is going to be playing also at the Liceo. So it's a good coincidence. How many of you... Uh, Sing Musetta or Mimi. Eh, tante. Okay. So it's, um, of course, a masterpiece of Puccini. Puccini wrote this opera. It's his fourth opera. So he, he started with Le Villi, then, which was not very big success. It was strange. Then he did Ed, um, um, Edgar. Mm -mm -mm. Finally, Manon Lescaut, which was huge success. And then he wrote La Bohème. And La Bohème was written, may, maybe many of you don't know, that it was written in between 1893 and 96. And it was written uh, as part of a competition for composers. And the subject was La Vie de Bohème of Murger, which was a, a novel about student life and uh, vie de bohème in Paris. And uh, so musicians, writers, poets, painters. And in this competition was Puccini and Ruggero Leoncavallo. They both wrote La Bohème for this competition. And of course, Leon, Leon Cavallo didn't have so much success, although now s people start to perform this opera. Uh, and Puccini, the first premiere was in Torino, Teatro Reggio, on the 1st of February of 1896. And the conductor was, do you know who conducted La Premiera de Bohème? Arturo Toscanini. He was 29 years old, very young, and he made the premiere of Bohème. Can you imagine? And many years later, in when Toscanini was in New York with the NBC Orchestra, he made a recording of Bohème, which exists 
If you can find it on eBay, take get it. Uh, it's a great recording. And it's very interesting because when I made my first bohem, as a, I, as a pianist, I played many times. But when I conducted my first bohem, I thought, hmm, would be interesting to hear Toscanini because he had a connection with Puccini di directly. And it's very interesting to, to listen because we always have this idea that Puccini music is very romantic and very, uh, you know, very, and it is, it is very romantic. But the beauty of Puccini's music is that the melody is so beautiful that it just works. You don't have to add anything. It's like you have sh sugar and then you add honey. Azúcar con miel. Fa schifo, no? È troppo. Come si dice fa schifo? Sì, sì, è troppo, no? E, e questo è un grande problema, sempre. Perché i cantanti, voi, ah, tengo lungo, no? E il direttore... E invece no, è molto semplice la musica. It's very simple. So it's hard, and when you listen to Toscanini, you understand that it's so beautiful and romantic, and, but also the secret of La Bohème this score, is that it's the first time in Italian opera, already in Manon Lescaut, but Bohème mo mostly, that it's real theater in music. In Verdi was also theater in music, but Puccini, the first uh, 15 minutes of Bohème, there is no melody, merely. Boom, 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 boom. It's four guys, four quattro hombres, che giocano. E non ci sta una melodia vera, fino a quando non arriva Mimi. When Mimi arrives, it's a new, new world. Yeah? So, for this reason, the premiere of, of, um, of Wem was a complete insuccess. It was a fiasco totale. Boo, critica, ah, ma che cos'è questo? Non, non c'è una melodia, che cos'è? Non capivano no? i critici, 1896, 1896. So, um, of course, with the passing of time, it became the most popular opera of Puccini and probably one of the most popular with Traviata and, I don't know, Butterfly, maybe. So, um, what is important to know is that uh, in Puccini and in La Bohème, uh, it's very important that he destroys a little bit the form, for you musician, of aria, cabaletta. Mm -hmm. It's just the story, like a little bit like Wagner, with little light motifs, light motifs. You know what a light motif is? Yes, everyone? It's un tema ricorrente, a theme that comes back. So every um, character in La Bohème has a theme, and I will play for you. And every situation has a theme. Sometimes the theme is just three notes or five notes. So now we go here and I show you. First of all, the beginning of the opera, there is no preludio, no overture, nothing. Just three notes. Anzi, one, two, three, four, four notes. E tan tan tan. This is the beginning of the opera. This theme, tan tan tan, will come back in the opera many times in different sauces. The salsas differentes. <laughs> Piano, forte, lento. Eh? Ma questo è il tema della gioventù, come si dice? It's the theme of youth. Yeah? By the way, this is the most difficult thing to conduct. In fact, Karajan, who's a great conductor, in Vienna, when he used to conduct this, he would walk from the... Then he would turn to the public, you know, normally you do this. 
and he did this, and then he did tan tan tan. He did not stop because people were clapping, so no one would hear that there would be, be mistakes. <laughs> Perché tan tan tan, it's very difficult. Capito? Quindi lui faceva così, la gente, bravo, 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 bravo. Che è successo? This is very difficult, this beginning. Everyone, when you start, when I start this, so remember everyone this. It's uh, semitono. This is the theme of youth, okay? And the whole first scene of Bohème is this. And then comes another theme, which is the theme of Rodolfo. Rodolfo is the poet. Eh? He's, he's uh, always talking about love, and he's romantic, and it, this is the, the theme. Uh. Comes back, ta -tan -tan -tan. Quindi questo tema fa si re fa nei cieli bigi guardo fumar dai mille comignoli parigi e penso a quel poltrone d'un vecchio caminetto ingannatore che vive in ozio come un gran signore. Quindi questo tema, ta -ta -ta oui, it's Rodolfo tema. Okay, one of the themes of Rodolfo. Remember this, yeah? And then, Marcello, who is the, he's the painter, yes? Everyone knows the story, yes? Do I have to tell you the story? Pochettino? Pochettino. Well, it's, there's, there's four, four artists, uh, men, who live in a loft in Paris under the, under the tetti, come si dice, under the, the roofs, yes. They have no money, they're poor. Sfigati, si dice. Quattro sfigati, in italiano. Non so in spagnolo, come si dice. So, uh, un poeta, a, a poet, one painter, Marcello, uh, one musician, più sfigato di tutti, <laughs> il più sfortunato, è Shonar, uh, he's a musician, and then there is the philosopher, Colline. They live with no money, and if they can eat some bread, they are happy, no? So, Rodolfo is the poet. So, all the keys of Rodolfo usually are bemolle. Si bemolle maggiore, la bemolle maggiore. This is very technical thing for musicians and non-musicians. But this... or... have uh, this... Tonalità, these keys have a sense of noble, noble keys. Sono nobili. If you go... Questo è più luce, no? Vero? Quindi, le, le tonalità con i bemolli, all, always the keys with... Questa è, this is the other theme of Rodolfo. It's always with flats, bemolli, eh? So, um, so the first scene in so in the first scene the guys are playing around, you know. It's so cold. I don't have money. It's it's a lot of playing. So, tan tan tan. One at some point arrives the third character, and this is Colline. Colline is the philosopher. He arrives and here. This is theme. It's the theme of Rodolfo, right? But because he just threw his um, poem inside the inside the fire because it's so cold that Marcello says, "Hey, but your your poetry is shit, so just throw it out." And so he he throws it in the in in the fuoco in the fire. And what Puccini does, he he has this music. which is the fire. But under the fire, 
is the, mu the, the poem of Rodolfo. So. Which is uh, from before. You see, this is the theme how Puccini uses every theme of every character for different situations. But we, do, we, we listen and we don't know what is happening. You can only find out if you take the score and you look and you are a maniac like I am. <laughs> and you find every little, little detail, yeah? And then, this is the best part. At some point, they say, okay, you put the first act, now let's put the second act inside the fire, you know? Allora, they start to... Again, the flames of, of la carta, no? Quando la carta va nel fuoco, si brucia e poi diventa scintille, no? Questo è molto impressionistico, no? And then, finally, arrives the fourth character, the musician. This is very important. Shonar's music is this. This theme, in the fourth act, when Mimi is about to die, and Shonar says to the other guys, let's leave Rodolfo and Mimi alone in the room, you know? Let's just, they need, they need to be alone. I just jump to make you see how the themes come back. This is from Liceo, they just gave it to me. And I just have to find it. It's so beautiful, ecco. Aspetta, un attimo, lo devo cercare. This is not my score. Ecco. So, remember, Shonar. Fast, full of life. In the fourth act, he says, okay, let's leave them alone. And what Puccini does, Cioè, the theme of Shonar, of life in first act, becomes the th nearly a theme of death in the fourth act. Just because it's slow, it's a different key, and it's, cioè, you, you don't recognize it when you first look at, tu sei compositore, quindi, no? It's the same. <laughs> This is just a little example, it's full. This opera is full of this. So, every character is depicted by Puccini very, very specifically. 
in the first 10 minutes of the opera. And for me, the first 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, should happen so fast that you don't know what, what's happening. Capito? Che, su che succede? Invece, sometimes it's very... And they play, they play, they play. Then comes l'affittuario, come si dice, the one who rents the house, who says, affitto, the rent, they don't have money. So they, they pour the wine to, to him to make him drunk. Non capisce più niente, and then they kick him out, right? And I go back to the first act, yes? And at some point, the magic happens. And this is the genius of Puccini. Wait. Ah, no, I skipped something very important. Another theme is the theme of Quartiere Latino, Le Quartier Latin, which is in Paris, and it's where they're living. And the night of Christmas, there's lots of food and casino and lots of people around. And in the first act, in the first act, when Shonar brings the money to them and says, hey, I, I made some money, we can go and we can go eat down. It's the Vigilia di Natale. It's the ante, come si dice Vigilia di Natale? Si, il 24, the 24th of December. We can go and eat something. He said, ah, what can we go eat? Let's go eat le frittelle, le, fri le frittelle, no? Come si dice, the fried, fried food. And this, what he makes. This is the, imagine. You can smell it, no? A little bit. And what he does is, for you musicians who understand, but also for, he uses the triad. Which are all chords that uh, 50 years before would have been like, <coughs> never, right? Tutte quinte strane, no? Quinter parallele. So this is Shonar saying, you know, let's go eat the fr le frittelle, and, and there it's with ha arpa and very, very piano. I say this because in the second act, this is very, very important. And what happens is that at some point, Rodolfo says to the guys, okay, guys, I have to write, please, go away. Devo scrivere. I have to write my poem. So they leave, and this is where I say, from, from the action of the first act of the guys, we arrive to the entrance of Mimi. And the way he does it, it's genius. So it's a flauto. Non sono in vena. Oof, I can't write. Okay. So one chord and changes the universe, vero? Cioè, it's like She comes in, and we already know something is going to happen. It's like sex bomb, capito? Vroom. No, perché the movie music, you know, all everyone who came after, John Williams, hanno copiato tutti da questo. It's one chord, 
Improvvisamente, sai. Wow. But she's sick. So. Something, she, she's not well. So what Puccini does, he in interrupts this melody. S'accomo di un momento, non occorre. La prego, entri. Si sente male. Il respiro pure le scale. Lei sviene, she faints. Rodolfo. Ed ora come faccio? Then he takes some water and he does this on her face. So, Puccini use harp arpa. Vedi, è tutto realistico. Però, in, in the time of Puccini, the, the people didn't understand this. Capito? It, they were used to, to Verdi, you know? Questo. Che viso da malata. She wakes up. Si sente meglio. So he's trying to talk to her, and it's so this is why it's so piano, no? Because she's so delicate that he doesn't want to, no? And then he, she says, because Mimi, everyone thinks Mimi is just stupid. No, 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 no. She went there because she knew that the guys left. Because she's, she's upstairs, and she's like, mm. she already saw Rodolfo before the opera starts. And when the guys leave, she says, now I go down. <laughs> and she says, ah, you know, I need light for my candle. Si, si è spenta la candela, no? This is the excuse why she comes in. So she wants Rodolfo. It's not so innocent like everyone wants to. No? Siete d'accordo, ragazze? Eh? You agree? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so at some point, uh, he puts the light on the candela. And then she wants to stay, so she goes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Puccini writes great music here. I'm sure you all recognize. She pretends that the, the wind made the candle go away. And then she goes. Um, Buonasera. Ha sventata, ha sventata la chiave della stanza dove. Inizia questo, ah, cerca la chiave, cerca la chiave. Boom, arriva la mano di Rodolfo. Capito? La tecnica femminile, <ride> tecnica femminile <ride> della fine dell'Ottocento. Se non c'è la luce, boom, boom. So, what, what Puccini does, it's very playful music. This important theme comes back in the fourth act. This is very important. So, and finally, this is the genius. He goes... <laughs> the hand touches. This theme is very important. La gelida manina is the, uh, the hand is so cold. So this theme comes back also in the fourth act when she's very sick, but much, much slower. I will show you later. But
So it's all in the flat key, vero? La bemolle, sol bemolle. Perché il mondo di Rodolfo è il mondo della poesia. Il mondo, it's a fantasy world. He makes up stories and he, of course he's trying to, to get her. Poi, chi sono? Sono un poeta, vabbè. E poi there's the famous theme which comes back and it's very important to see that the theme is in la, la bemolle maggiore. poet, I love things that talk about love, and she's so it's very romantic, of course. And then he stops singing in La Bemolle Maggiore. What does Puccini Sometimes here, of course, everyone stops to clap, but actually the music goes on. Should not be a stop because this note <laughs> It's the world of Mimi. So Mimi is nearly always in sharp keys and the Rodolfo is nearly always in flat keys. For people who don't understand what this means is the, the flat keys, il bemolle, la bemolle, is, is a warm sound. The sharp key is more bright in general. And in music, when you change from, from uh, mezzotono, semitono, sometimes changes everything because she she's more um, she's sick but she has very much hope to, to live so her theme is quindi in sharp key and then she says questo è il tema di Mimi molto importante saying, you know, I'm a very simple person, I make flowers, I make fake flowers, I stay in the cold all day, molto semplice, no? But then she says one thing which is very nice, <laughs> she says, um, mi piacciono quelle cose che hanno si dolce malia che parlano d'amore. Quindi, mi piacciono Anzi dolce Maria che parla d'amor il profumo. Che parla di sogni e di chi quelle cose. He has been saying for half an hour, I'm a poet, I'm a poet, I write poetry, I like blah, and she says, I like those things that are sin, and finally, I love poetry. <laughs> si può fare, capito? <laughs> this is very important because people always think, ah, she's so sweet. No, 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 no. <laughs> she's getting there. I like everything that is poetry. Lei mi intende? Dice, è lui, sì. 
È, 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 è teatro proprio, Capì? l'ha capito. Per adesso arriva il momento più bello. Because she says I live in a small, small chamber, it's white, it's simple. I uh, go to, sometimes I go to church, sometimes I don't go to church. La in una bianca cameretta. Allora, là in una bianca cameretta, guardo sui tetti e in cielo. So, in this small white chamber, I look the sky, at the sky. Ma, but, quando viene lo sgelo, il primo sole è mio. When the, uh, the winter goes away and the cold goes away, the first sun is mine. Now, tutte le bimbi qui, did you ever think why she says this? It's very important for someone who has tuberculosis, who is sick, to see the sun. And the first sun is mine. It's, it's a very subtle thing, but Puccini, that's is why he's such a genius. He, he brings it in the most beautiful melody here. And people don't understand that Mimi, she's already knows she's so sick, no? But she wants to live. And the first sun of uh, printemps, of the, what do you say, the spring, is hers. So she goes, La in una bianca cameretta guardo sui tetti e in cielo. genio. <ride> Però sempre si pensa che Mimi qui sta cercando di sedurlo. No, qui è, è una cosa sua, capito? Una cosa sua lì. Infatti Puccini cosa fa? Fa un grande crescendo, no? Però poi torna nell'intimità. È mio, è, mi è mio. Capito? È mio. Questo è geniale. E poi infatti il pensiero eh, poi torna. Germoli. E così. Cosa succede dopo? Che i ragazzi che stanno giù, the, the guys are waiting downstairs for Rodolfo. So they say, hey Rodolfo, Rodolfo, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hola, non senti? Same theme. From the beginning. Yeah? Vedi? Lumaca, poi Tucolo, eh, ma sei pigro, dai, andiamo, andiamo, andiamo. Eh, dice, un momento, un momento che ho da fare. E eh, ah, da fare, eh. hanno capito. They understand that there's a girl there, and they say, ok, just go. And they say, he says, ok, just go down to the Café Momus, keep a seat for me, and I will come. And they say, Momus, 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 zitti e discreti, andiamocene via. Momus, momus, trovò la poesia. Momus, momus, vieni. Allora, normalmente nell'armonia, giusto? Re risolve a sol. Cosa fa Puccini? Non c'entra niente, capito? Momi, ti lascia sospeso lì, fa uh, Trovò la poesia Momus, momus, momus. Il tema di Rodolfo That was in La bemolle maggiore Becomes La maggiore 
So, why? Because Mimi now is part of his life, so it changes the tonalità. It's not just dreaming, it's real. And this is why it's La Maggiore, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. But he could have easily gone... Invece he chooses La, not La bemolle, but La. la. So it's like um, the theme of love. This is the theme of love. But it's in La Maggiore, not La Bemolle. So we think as audience that there is hope, there is life, there is a future maybe for these two people because we don't know how sick she is. So then ends the first act, of course, and they go down to Quartier Latin. And now it is the great second act. The second act is uh, the most difficult for a conductor. 18 minutes, 18 minuti dura, of hell, <laughs> where everything can go wrong or sublime. But it's the 18 minuti più difficili dell'opera. Everything happens in 18 minutes in my tempo. Usually it's 19 for everyone else. So, remember when, when Shonar said, let's go eat in Cartier Latino? Lui ha detto. Allora, Puccini starts second act, trombe. Same thing. It's the same theme, but like this. So, usually opens like this, trombe, casino. Si mangia, si fa di tutto, si canta, si balla. And the guys and, the, and Mimi, they are inside this, this tourbillon, no? And then, I can't stay too much on this, but at some point arrives Musetta, who is, she's the third, I mean, the, sorry, the sixth character. Uh, before she comes in, the guys say, okay, let's have a big toast. Col champagne, no? They have very little money, but they like to spend it, yeah? So, I love this moment because Mimi and, and Rodolfo, they are, you know, just in love. They just met, so they're like, mm, you know. And Marcello, the, po uh, the painter, he's like, no, nah, love. Men, women, no, they betray you, they're not faithful. He's very acido, come si dice? Very, very sour with, with women. And so, in the theme, aspetta, dov'è? Marcello, secondo il palato, l'amore è miele o fiele? Oddio, l'ho offeso in lutto mia mimì. Allegri è un toast. Let's have a toast. Qua del licor. Bring some wine. Ta -tan -tan -tan. Same from the beginning. Yeah? This is... Mi fa sola si Beviam, beviam. Here comes the music of Musetta. Mm. Tantra, tantra, tantra. So we know from this music that Musetta, mm -mm, not so, not so faithful girl. Un po' coquette, no? Un po' 
leggera, no? Si dice leggera in spagnolo, leggera. She's light. She comes in with an old man who pays. E lei, tutta, sai. And we discover that she's the ex-lover of Marcello. Che infatti dice, no, le donne non vanno... Uh, he's but it, the reality is that he's very much in love with her and she's very much in love with him. So the two themes of Musetta are this. Her music when she comes in. This tan -tan 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 will come back very many times. But the most famous melody that she sings, of course, is the waltz. And il, il Valzer di Musetta is one of the most sensual, beautiful musics ever written. And she sings this to irritate, irritare, Marcello. Capito? She tries to seduce every man in the room so that he's like... And then he explodes, of course. So, you know this theme, I'm sure. No? Puccini usa questa melodia proprio per sedurre. And at the end of this, of course, Marcello is completely cotto, come si dice? Cotto. He's, he's uh, nice and he can't resist anymore. So he goes and kisses her. And of course, when this happens, it's l'apoteosi. <laughs> understand how on the first night this could not be a success. <laughs> this is so beautiful, no? But uh, they didn't understand why it was the theme comes back and instead it's like uh, perfection of music, no? And then there's of course the big banda, but this year. I wanted to show you two or three things of how all these themes come back in the third and fourth act, which are the beginning of the end. And we know that it's the beginning of the end because the third act, it's a genius scene. C'est la barrière d'enfer, outside of Paris, and it's snowing, it's cold. And what he does is this. <laughs> Already, it's not. So the life of the first and second act, it's already finito. And what does Puccini do? He takes an incredible genius. This. Fifth. Becomes open fifth. Cioè, invece di fare, he does open. Una, una quinta aperta, you know every, everybody what that is, yeah? It's just a fifth. 
which, by the way, was always forbidden in composition. You can't do open fifth. But he does. It gives a sense of desolazione, desolation, the snow that comes down. No? And empty, it's empty, vuoto, il vuoto. Maggiore, improvvisamente, no? It's a great way to set the atmosphere. I mean, if we think Debussy, you know, made an art form out of this, just impressionismo, no? Un po' impressionista. And then, Wait, yes, here. So we have, we see Mimi coming in. She's looking for Marcello. Because uh, between the second act and the third act, Mimi and Rodolfo have separated. And it, later on, we find out why. And Marcello uh, got back together with Musetta. But Musetta, because she's a good person, but she can't help it, she's always being a little bit flirty with other men. So mm, there's a lot of tension. This is a couple that is constantly fighting and getting back together. Make up sex and back to. Have you? No, eh, eh, così. Cioè, sono sempre che litigano e poi si ritornano insieme. It's a lot of chemistry, yeah? But she's actually a good person. But what happens? At some point, Mimi comes in, she says, I'm looking for Marcello. Campane. Theme from the beginning. So when comes Marcello, same theme from the beginning, just in a different sauce, yeah? And comes, and then there's the big duet. I mean, I can't play all of this, but you should, I mean, I would, but one of the most beautiful things ever written. Aspetta. Back to them. Here. So, they, Marcello says to Mimi, but look, you have to make like me and, uh, like me and Musetta. We fight, but then we get back together. And, and she says, no, he's, uh, Rodolfo, he's too jealous. He looks at me at night to, to see if I'm, saying someone else's name, I mean, he's crazy, no? Allora, vabbè, ve lo suono un pochino perché è troppo bello. C'è Rodolfo qua. Mm. C'è Rodolfo, non posso entrare, no, 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 no. He's, he, we get already a sense of drama. Something is going wrong. The youthfulness of the first act, it's over. Youth is slipping through, no? And then she hears that Rodolfo is coming, and so she hides. And what Puccini does is, again, genius. He uses the same music. You remember the beginning of the opera? So comes comes Rodol Rodolfo. Lara. Io voglio separarmi da Mimi. Sanda da 
Voglio separarmi da Mimi perché? Ah, perché lei, because she's flirting with other men. Da, 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 da. And then Marcello says, I don't believe you, you're an ass, you're saying lots of bugie, lots of lies, she's a good person, why you say that she's not faithful to you? And so he says, okay, the truth is, Mimi, me, she's very sick, and I don't know what to do. Sorry, men of this room, typical men. Siete un po' codardini certe volte. No, not always, però... He can't cope, she's sick. What do I do? I can't give her money, I can't give her... He feels bad, but he's also like, uh, cosa faccio? So he, at some point, this is why it's so great. He says, um, dove? Uh, Marcello says, tu sei geloso, tu sei geloso, collerico lunatico, imbevuto, di pregiudizi, noioso, cocciuto. And this is why he says she's always flirting with other, with other men, right? And then, eccolo, lui, he, he confesses Rodolfo, he says, okay, I love her, but I am really scared, no? E dice, io l'amo, oh, ho paura, ma ho paura. Quindi siamo in fa maggiore. Una nota va in fa minore. Mi mi è tanto malato. La povera piccina è condannata. Questa è la verità. Funerale, vedo. Cioè, è incredibile però, da fa maggiore... He tells Marcello, you know, she's always coughing and I don't know what to do. And then Mimi, who is behind the car there, hears this and says, oh, oh he knows. And then she, <coughs> she starts coughing. So Rodolfo sees her and says, no, I was kidding. I didn't mean what I said. It, it's very, very, it's very real, no? It can happen today also. This is why it's so beautiful. And then comes the most beautiful moment in the opera, one of, which is Musetta, at some point, starts laughing with some guy in the middle of all of this drama. And so we hear this music. The music from before, no? But in a different key. And come, then starts the, the famous quartetto with, where Puccini, like Verdi, I have to say, Verdi also did this, but even more Puccini. There's four characters with four different themes and four different stati d'animo, see? Um, and two couples. The couple that is trying to, to get back together and the couple who is uh, constantly fighting. So he's like, ah, sei una puttana. No, ho detto una parolaccia. Ma tanto glielo dice praticamente. No, no, because you always want to control me. So on one side, we have two people fighting. On the other side, you have two people trying to come back together. And so Puccini, I can't sing all the, all the, word, all the notes, but... Uh, ah. 
addio dolce svegliare alla notte they decide we should leave each other but let's wait until until the, the nice weather Rodolfo and Mimi singing. Marcello, che facevi, che dicevi, che vuoi dire? Presso al fuoco a quel signor, come una pentola di fagioli, capito? So, while they are singing, we hear also Marcello saying, che facevi, che dicevi, che vuoi dir? Presso al fuoco a quel signor, che vuoi dir? Mimi, ognuno è solo la al mio venire. I don't, 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 don't. So, this, is, this quartetto, when you, ever you go see it or you study it, you have to keep in mind that there's four people singing different music in different character, but the melody is, is basically the big... Uh, cappello, come si dice, no? E, 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 e alla fine, at the very end, they all sing together. This, um, dove pittore da bottega vipera rospo now comes something genius of Puccini's ci lasceremo ci lasceremo alla stagione dei fior alla stagione dei fior we will leave each other in the season of flowers in when the spring comes now when puccini puts in music spring this happens in an one oboe one oboe okay alla stagione dei fior It's the same theme, but piano, lento, un oboe, sulla parola primavera. E lui è un genio, perché no one, no one ever hears this. Did you ever know that this is there? Ready? When I conduct, I always tell the oboe to, to, to be very clear there, because ci lasceremo alla stagione dei fior, alla stagione dei So, so all the themes come, come back 
like it's genius, no? But for the time of Puccini, this was very strange. It's, this is why the critics were like, now, today, we think it's the most beautiful thing ever. And in the fourth act, I just want to show you two things and then we finish. Of course, she's very sick, so she will die. Purtroppo. But the genius of the fourth act is that all the themes, all of them, come back for little situations. So every time Musetta sings, there is... And then she sings. It's little, little, um, like paintings, you know? Um, when she dies is the most, I think, theatrically genius thing. Aspetta. Porta qualche... Aspetta. I already played for you this. Allora. I skip, I skip. Ecco. So she's very cold. And so Musetta goes and buys a uh, manicotto, uh, something to warm her hands. And she sings. Same aria of Rodolfo. Lei si sente male, di nuovo, e poi, eccolo qua. She receives this, come bello e morbido. Le mani allividite, il tepore, le abbelli. Aspetta, piangi, sto bene, eccolo, pianger così perché la fai. Sempre più lento, eh. Here is written lunga pausa in the score. When I uh, was a pianist in the theater, never I saw a conductor making this lunga pausa. Usually it's love. Che ha detto il medico verrà. So, but, no, è vero, mai, non si sente mai. But it's written lunga pausa, mette le mani nel manicotto, no? She puts the hands there and she's talking, talking, and then she falls asleep. But really, she's, she's dead in this moment. So usually it's th the hand goes like this. This lunga pausa, it's theatrically genius because the audience sees that she's dead. Y you understand, if you do the lunga pausa, but the guys, no. They are just, they don't see that she's already dead. So we know as audience that she's dead, but they don't know. They see afterwards. Only Shonar, oops, she's dead. But he doesn't say anything. So, and I, f when I did my first bohème in Los Angeles, I said, I will make this lunga pausa, lunga. 
And it, you know, it's incredible when you do it long enough. I really don't know. It's very uncomfortable. So it's um Mi amor sempre con te al caldo Eh, questo è teatro, capito? Se tu tieni la pausa, è veramente incredibile, no? Quello che succede. It's incredible. And so they keep talking. So what did the doctor say? Then she's already dead. So. And then the end of the, of the opera is the most... By the way, Puccini had a very complicated and difficult relationship with women. Uh, he had some tragic things happened, you know. He had an illegitimate child, was going to have, then she committed suicide, the, 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 the woman. It, cioè, veramente un rapporto molto contorto con le donne. In fact, all his 11 operas, all the women, lead women, die at the end. Tutte. Se ne salva una sola. <laughs> Only one survives, and it's um, Fanciulia del West. But she leaves uh, with Johnson, the, all the guys. In, and so the end of Fanciulla is like a um, psychological death because he, she abandons them. But she doesn't physically die. But Liu dies. Uh, Manon Lescaut dies. Mimi dies. <laughs> But um, Puccini wrote later in his life that one of the women he loved most was Mimi. And that every time that came the end of Bohème, which is, of course, this. Come va? Vedi, tranquilla. Che vuol dire quell'andare e venire? Quel guardarmi così. These three chords. When these three chords come, he said in the letter, I cry every time. It's as if she's dying uh, every time. And I think in this opera, if something in the audience doesn't happen on these three chords, I, as a musician, have failed. Cioè, se, se con questi tre accordi non c'è un, una reazione di pianto o di qualcosa non funziona. <laughs> It means it's not right. <laughs> yeah? But it's incredible. Out of nowhere comes this. Bam, bam. So, anyways, this is short um, explanation. I mean, we could go on forever about this piece that I love very much. You should all go and see it in Liceo. Uh, my colleague Bizanti is conducting. And maybe one day I will come too and you can hear it done by me. Uh, do you have any questions? Tutti gli studenti. Do you have questions? Preguntas? Nada. Tutti morti. <laughs> <laughs> Take advantage that I'm here. Approfittate, ragazze. Domande? Niente. Il compositore? Niente. Sì, vai. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you feel it like this? O sea, lo, lo preguntas en español por lo... Por... Y como nos ha explicado, parece realmente su máxima favorita y entonces yo quería saber si cada vez que explica una ópera parece su favorita o si realmente lo es. Con Bohem es fácil porque... No, I mean, whenever I study a score, I try to really get inside the score. And for me, what is important in opera, especially, is that there is a, a real union between the text and the music. And if a composer is a good composer, I hope you are also, it should be connected. And this is the lesson for you young singers, is that it's not about just singing the aria, Or, cioè, what does this aria mean? Why Puccini wrote this theme here, like this? Why is the fermata here and not there? And this is the problem with Puccini, for example, is that many times the singers decided in the past, my moment, just wait for me. And which no, because it's written, uh, Puccini, he's very specific, more, much more than Verdi, what he wants in the score where it is the ritardando. So every opera that I study, I try to, to get passionate about because it's very hard to make music with something you don't like. Sometimes you're obliged to do it, but life is too short. So that's my philosophy. I, 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 I usually try to, to find what is good in the score. And so, of course, Bohème I have played, conducted many times. I, every time I'm doing it, I discover something new. Um, like these ta -dan -tan -tis here and there, and you think, wow, why did he put it there, you know? Um, but no, I mean, musicians that work with me know that I'm always very passionate about what I do. Senza passione, la vita è proprio una palla, come si dice a Roma. Pero, <laughs> and we have the, uh, we're lucky that we have these composers who wrote such great music, such great theater. E teatro, no? It's theater. This is what is important. It's not just about singing a nice melody and everyone goes like this. E teatro, no? Teatro in musica. So, sì. Words. Yeah. Besides that they were singing, yeah. but you were explaining like it was words, like yeah. theater. Yeah. Sì, questo è importante. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. To understand that every theme is linked to, to a situation or to a word or when he takes her hand, it's... And today, you know, we have musicals, we have... Uh, but we have to understand that it all comes from here, no? And we, we lose a little bit the sense of where the music comes from, the history of music, who are the great composers. You know, Puccini in Manon Lescaut, he writes um, this theme. Che cos'è secondo voi quello? Tita, 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 tita. E l'ha scritto lui però. Cioè, capito? And, and, and maybe he didn't do it on purpose, but it comes from here. And that comes from Verdi and that comes from Mozart, capito? Monteverdi, it's like all one cir big circle. So you wanted to ask something? English better. Yeah, I got a composer for, uh, for films. Yeah. Si? Ah, vedi. And that's it. And everything you said today, it's... It's uh, the way I try to work, yeah. trying to work with late motives and um, working in, in with... In film, it's very important because in film you, have very important. you have the visible, no? Because you explain the, the story in the film through the music, so and in an emotional way and in, in, in a narrative way. So mm. um, it's very interesting, everything you explained today, because uh, mm. I love it. So Grazie. thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> ah, c'è un'altra one. Bene, si sono scaldati i motori. Yes. Yes. And um, I have 
Thank you. I have two questions. First, I'm finding some difficulties of explaining the music in opera mm -hmm. for in the Middle East because it's not the traditional music used to be heard there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's very important when you get to understand, like you explained today, it's another world of La Boheme, mm -hmm. especially for singers, because sometimes, like you said, we just sing an aria to perform and to show our, our capacity and capability mm -hmm. to reach high notes and to do... Well, you control. need all of that. That's of the course, base. The base. <laughs> but this background gives you another perspective to sing from another point of view. Mm. Mm. And um, how to, to um, explain it also to um, people uh, who doesn't have that access to opera, this is one. Mm -hmm. And to my second question, do you think that now we understand that the Boe La Boheme mm. is that genius, but mm. back then it wasn't that. Uh, it was a shock because he broke some rules, mm. and he broke the traditions, and this w uh, that was not acceptable in the mm. society. Do you think that some point in the future this uh, opera would be unexpected, uh, unacceptable, unexpectable mm. another time? No. Would it change? I hope not. I mean, but I think that. Well, today with the internet and YouTube and everything, everything is more accessible. So uh, for cultures that are less uh, close to us, when, when a composer is a, a universal genius, mm. usually Verdi, Puccini, the themes that we talk about are human themes that are the same for it, no matter what culture you come from, there will be love, there will be jealousy, there will be possession, there will be betrayal, there, there will be friendship between guys. So, you know, of course, it's a different language, but the situation is universal. Mm. And so it should, uh, in to answer your first question, it's, it's a question of how you explain the theater of the music to let's say, if you ha ever were to teach in, in your country, uh, in, even if the culture is different and the relationship between man and woman or whatever can be seen differently. Sentimenti of, of love or hatred or getting sick, getting cancer and dying, it's universal. So anyone can relate to this death, no? I think, so, yeah. And you caused physically change. I'm, I'm a music therapist mm. as well, and I believe that music can cause physical oh. change. And you did it by the three uh, uh, chords yeah. and the final. I felt the pain like in Good. my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a very powerful moment. It's very powerful. And I, I always feel when I conduct this music that I feel the pain. I l literally feel it. And so it's... Um, these 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 people who wrote this music, they they had, and there's still today. You know, it's a different form uh, with film, but it's kind of the same. To capture that mood, you know, if you think of Ennio Morricone or Nicola Piovani or Nino Rota, and I'm talking about Italians, but then there's everyone else. You know, these are also geniuses to capture the the moment and the sentimento of the of the situation. So. Thank you. Gaia, sei arrivata. Hello. Aspetta, vi metto la mascherina, se no ci uccidono. Aspetta. Ciao. Benvenuta. Sì, ciao, ciao. Come stai? Hola, buenas tardes. Nada, no, Gabriele. Well, thank you very much to everybody. Thank you very much, Speranza. I think it's been wonderful. And uh, we have a double privilege today because together with us is also Guy Adanese, who is the general consul uh, in, uh, of Italy in Barcelona, and uh, together with the Italian Institute of Culture, where is Lucio? Lucio, who is, uh, <laughs> uh, who is the director, uh, was the organization who made possible uh, the, the event tonight. So thank you very much to Speranza, thank you very much to Lucio, thank you very much to Gaia. And Gaia, if you will say, want to say a few words, the microphone is for you. So it's in English today. Or yes. yes. No, no, okay, okay. It's fine. It's fine. No, I practice a little bit. I understand. So I can't <laughs> speak. 
So thank you, thank you very much, Speranza, for being here with us. Um, we uh, promised to each other that this yes. would happen, and, and it's it. happening. We did it. We're we're strong women, and strong women never <laughs> <laughs> give up. <laughs> give up. <laughs> Uh, because the circumstances are not easy, eh? so I mean, it was not um, it was not uh, very easy to to think about the way to make you come again. But um, not only we we have again Speranza because I was um, it was very nice your question because I remember when she explained to us La Traviata when she was uh, doing La Traviata in the Liceo, and I was uh, we were all overwhelmed by your uh, by your master class, and so we decided with Gabriel. <laughs> that we wanted you to explain us every, every opera. opera. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just the beginning, Speranza. Yeah, okay, We're I going to, I mean, mm. I'm leaving Barcelona, but I think mm. Gabriel is going to harass you <laughs> every every year to come and do some master classes in Casa Seata. So mm. I'm very happy having created this link because mm. um, this is my job as a, as a consul general uh, is to create um, 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 bridges between um, my country and this country and uh, share w uh, here our uh, our national talent because you are uh, uh, um, you are really um, the paradigm of uh, Italian national talent mm -hmm. because you are a, a, um, a brilliant woman a powerful woman that uh, um, was formed outside Italy also but yes, in Italy lot. Italy and, and outside. outside, and that sh it, you made the best of these uh, cosmopolitan <laughs> um, studies, and uh, and so we are very proud of having you in a world Happy. that is uh, very much uh, represented by men, which is the the world of uh, direction of orchestra, um, and. Um, and we're very proud to have you here, and we're very, really looking forward to hear you tomorrow. And tomorrow, you should come. Yes, yes, I wanted to tell everybody that uh, there are still some, uh, um, mm, some, yes, yeah, some tickets for tomorrow, uh, because uh, now we have an aforo which is uh, quite decent. Uh, so I spoke with the auditorium, and if you're interested, please contact the auditorium so that you can uh, participate tomorrow night. I'm very happy to see the president of the Casa degli Italiani here that represents uh, uh, our uh, Italian community, uh, and a very ancient uh, established association of Italians in Barcelona. And uh, so I'm very grateful to all of you to have, uh, particip having participated tonight and to Gabriele and Casa Seat forever and ever. And uh, this is our technique as Italians. We, we try to stick together. So uh, this is like, <laughs> this is a, a very good thing. You always have a good Italian in any multinational uh, or, or uh, foreign um, enterprise. And this makes, uh, um, uh, this creates the possibility to share our talents with, uh, with others. So thank you for being so open also and uh, having us here with you. Um, have a good evening and uh, Speranza, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, grazie. grazie. So Futura continues tomorrow. Eh? We, have, uh, we have a talk. Uh, a talk with the with the uh, mayor of Barcelona, Ada Colau, uh, that will be discussing with the um, with the mayor of Milan, and everything is on streaming also. And then at night we have the concert at the auditorium, and then on the third of June, oh, al conservatory, pardon. And then on the third of June we have uh, uh, also here in, in Casa Seat uh, a round table about uh, sustainable. Uh, cooking, <laughs> gastronomy, I don't know what. Yes, 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 it's with the Chamber of Commerce that is another partner of all this initiative. And then we have Guest Cities Milano, which is a great, great, great initiative that Casa Seat has launched and we are proud the first city is Milano. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, have a, a good night, all of you. Muchísimas gracias. Diving to die, scratched in your smile. No 
Scratched in your throat.